Hi there! Welcome back to Synchro Secrets, the go-to channel for all things artistic swimming. My name is Agata, and today I'm going to dive into the most requested by you figures, swordfish. Whether you are a seasoned swimmer or a beginner, this video will help you understand this beautiful figure. But before I start, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of my videos. I think that at the beginning it is important to say that we have actually two figures that have swordfish in them. First one is in the under 12 category that is named simply swordfish and the other one we can find in the under 15 category and it is named swordfish straight leg arena rotation and it starts with swordfish and then transitions to a split. As you can see the main difference here is that at the beginning of the figure in the U12 category one leg is extended and one is bent. So the athlete needs to lift both at the same time and finish in an arched bent knee position. In the U15 category, the athlete has to lift a straight leg and finish in the split. Today, I will focus on the swordfish that we have in the under 12 category, but the principles are quite the same in both cases. So if you are an athlete or a coach in the under 15 category, make sure you watch this video because you can also apply some of the tips I'm sharing here. In the swordfish figure, we will be able to notice several key positions. The initial front layout with a transition to a bent knee front layout, and then going to a vertical bent knee position with a slight arch. This continues moving to achieve a bent knee arch position. Then the athlete should extend the bent knee to the surface arch position, and with a continuous motion, end up in their back layout position. So let's analyze each position and each transition step by step. The athlete starts the figure in a front layout position with their body extended with head, upper back, buttocks and heels at the surface of the water. Keep in mind that the head can be in or out of the water as long as the athlete keeps their head there during the whole transition. So if the athlete starts their layout with their head in the water, then they should perform the bending of the leg and start of the lift with their head in the water. The main mistakes here that can be noticed for some of the athletes are the sinking of the legs, very hectic arm movements, and no body control. I will not go into details on how to manage those mistakes because you can find all the information about front layout, how to perform it, how to manage the mistakes, and some additional drills in my online course for beginners, I will include the link to this course under this video. After the front layout, the athletes should bend one of the legs to achieve a bent knee front layout position. The transition has to be done in a controlled manner, so not a rapid movement. When the movement is finished, the athletes should have their body extended in front layout position, with the tie of the bent leg perpendicular to the surface of the water. Now I'm repeating again, just to make sure you remember it. There can be no head placement, so either out or in the water, after the athlete starts bending the leg. Let's move on to the most difficult transition of this figure, which is lifting the legs out of the water in a 100 degrees arc. It has to go over the water and finish in the bent knee arch position. The idea is that the athlete has to show control during this figure, so it means no rapid movements. They have to stay on the spot when lifting the leg and they also have to show a slight arch in their back. But how do we do it? Let's explore it together. For me personally, a very important ingredient in this figure is your back flexibility and back and glute strength. I already posted many drills on land and in the water on my social media like Instagram that will train your glutes and your lower back to be able to lift the leg up. Follow me to check them out. And here I'm sharing some of the exercises so you can practice them all during your training. I usually tell my athletes to start this figure with a slight arch in their lower back and an initial leg lift and after that they can add arm movement as the next step. I have to be honest, I've seen so many different techniques that work for different athletes so you just have to experiment with your arm placement and arm movement but my main tip, my first tip would be that put your arms where your weight is, which is actually next to your hips, actually a little bit behind the bent leg. And the weight in this example is slightly behind the hips, so you have to reach out there with your arms. Now, if you wanted to do this figure following this diagram, then you will for sure travel back, so towards your legs. And the reason is the positioning of your hands. They cannot face diagonal to the bottom of the pool, 
they need to face towards the bottom of the pool. So when you are doing this figure, you will need to reach with your arms way more back towards your extended leg and your hand palms should face to the bottom of the pool. When it comes to the amount of strokes and the speed of the strokes, it depends on the athlete. I have seen many athletes doing three initial strokes before they switch to their support scale. The first stroke is to sink a little bit under the water, grabbing wide in front with a hand facing up. The second stroke goes diagonal out but closer to your body and your body should not sink anymore but your leg should continue moving in an arc. And the third stroke reaches toward your legs with your hand facing to the bottom of the pool with a continuous legs movement. So you should arrive in the bent knee vertical position with a slight arch in your lower back with a support scalp scaling behind your back so securing the weight of your body so not scaling in front reaching back towards your extended leg this position requires a lot of body control and core and glutes strength the main mistakes that i have seen during this figure and during this lift is that the athlete is actually going too much under the water so maybe they are performing too many strokes or the strokes are too far away from the body facing up so going down pushing them down under the water instead of lifting them up now the next mistake is the athlete moving back while lifting the leg and i already explained this this is because of the hands placement and hands like the way they are facing if they are facing diagonal to the bottom then the athlete is gonna move back so make sure you reach further under your legs. And the next mistake is actually very popular with the young athletes when instead of lifting the leg up in an arch position, they go to the pike position. And be careful because this can result either in a zero for this figure or a one point deduction if the pike was not achieved in actual pike. But it was kind of, you know, it was not showing the arch position. Then there will be one point deduction. Now, once we arrive to this bend knee arch position, we continue with a continuous motion to lower the leg to the bend knee arch position. Once we arrive, the athlete should straighten the bent leg to a surface arch position. This position should be shown but not held prior to the start of the surfacing action. Hips joints remain on a horizontal line with full extension of the legs with thighs and feet at the surface of the water. Now with the continuous motion, from the surface arch position, the swimmer has to go and unroll all the way to the back layout position and now the hips are on the red line and the athlete should finish the back layout position with the head on the red line so they have to move a little bit in this transition now thank you for watching this short breakdown of the swordfish figure if you enjoyed this video make sure you give thumbs up and you subscribe to this channel so we can grow together also if you have any more questions about the swordfish figure make sure you ask them in the comment section down below i am sure i will answer them all and also make sure that you are patient with this figure because it takes time and it takes understanding of what you have to do if it doesn't work at the first time try it again and analyze it and make sure that your arm movement is correct and that your hand placement is at the right place so see you in the next video bye